mouth that you want him to speak. I thank you, Lord, for hearts that are open and ears that can hear what you would say unto us tonight. Let us be attentive. Let us be uh, steadfast in your word, Lord. We praise you for all that you're doing in our lives, in our families. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> Tonight, I want to talk about the best for the family. And it's, it's like a question. It's something that I have pondered uh, over the years. What is the best thing I can do for my own family? And uh, to give you the uh, bottom line real quick, I believe the best thing that we can do for our family is to serve God. Um, and, and I want to start with uh, Joshua uh, 24, uh, 15, I believe, that uh, Sherry's going to read to us. This was Joshua's decision that he made. Uh, it was a monumental de decision. So let's go ahead and read this. Okay, this is from the New American Standard a Translation. But if it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which you your fathers served, which were beyond the Euphrates River, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, I, I believe that's the best thing that Joshua could do, and I believe that's the best thing that I could do. I'm really concerned about families and uh, certainly my own family, but also your family. And, and what can we do to reach uh, our families? It, mm -hmm. It's very important. And like I've mentioned before, uh, there are some children <clears throat> that tell their parents, don't pray for me. Well, that doesn't stop parents from praying Amen. for them. But, but you can see there are, there are all kinds of issues uh, that need to be addressed. And, and what I... Uh, see in, in this message today is that um, we are to be a prophetic expression of God's kingdom. Our family is to be a prophetic mm -hmm. expression. You know, uh, let's just think how important a prophetic uh, act is, a prophetic expression. Um, for example, Elisha, uh, he told a, a widow woman, uh, who was about to lose her children because of a great debt that she couldn't pay. He asked her, what do you have? And she said, just a little bit of oil. And he said, okay, go into your, into your house, have your sons gather as many empty vessels mm -hmm. uh, as they can and fill them up and close the door and, and fill them up. And so what we see here, he, he was a prophet. And so he's mm -hmm. telling her something to do. That's a prophetic Act. act and uh, what does the prophetic act do well it, it does a lot of things it drives back evil and then it was going to be a pretty evil situation for them because she was about to lose her sons to slavery that's a pretty mm -hmm. that's a very evil thing and uh and so what she did they gathered up all these vessels and she started pouring and pouring and there was just no end to it and, and she uh, filled all of the empty vessels <clears throat> And if she had had more vessels, or if her sons had gone out and been a little bit more industrious and brought in a few more vessels, they would have all been filled. Uh, so we don't want to stop God or limit God. And, and so she was able to take the oil that had been produced from this prophetic act and go and sell it and mm, pay off the debts and to live on it, she and her son. So uh, doing what the prophets say, uh, is really important. And, uh, you know, another thing that uh, Elisha did some really interesting things. Uh, there was poison one time in a pot of uh, food uh, of gourds that mm -hmm. uh, the sons of the prophets were going to be eating. And, and it turned out they had picked a, a poisonous gourd. And so it made all of it uh, poison. And so what he did, he, he poured a little bit of salt, uh, a little bit of or meal into oh. the pot and, and it all became good mm. and so that's a prophetic act uh, uh soon uh, thereafter he uh, one of the young men uh had an axe and he was chopping down some trees and his axe he had fell off fell into the jordan river and he put a stick in the water and the stick <laughs> made the axe, axe head come to the to swim mm -hmm. yeah that's a prophetic act uh, you've got to do these prophetic acts. 
<clears throat> I don't know if you remember or not, but uh, recently Sherry uh, told a couple in uh, New Mexico uh, that were in one of our Zoom meetings uh, to do a prophetic act and to go salt some land. They, they wanted uh, to build a school for children. And uh, the uh, power company uh, resisted them and, and would not combine uh, power lines so that they could build the school. And so she said, go salt it. That was Sunday night. On Monday, they went and salted the land. And then on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, the man from the company uh, called them and said, let's, uh, let's meet again. And, and all of the issues appear to be worked out now. So they're going to combine the lines. They're going to build mm -hmm. this uh, school because they followed a prophetic act. And what I want you to see is that uh, the husband, see, is uh, to love the wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So the family then is a prophetic uh, act of the uh, kingdom of God. It's a prophetic expression mm -hmm. of the kingdom of God. And so we need to, in our family, we need to love each other as uh, Jesus said to love one another. He said in uh, John 15, uh, he said, love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. Well, how did he yeah. love? He said, a greater love has no, no man than this, that he put, laid down his life for his friends. So that's how Jesus loved. And, and so the husband is supposed to love the wife with that kind of a prophetic expression. And so the whole family is to be a prophetic expression of God's kingdom. And so some people that you know and that know your family, uh, the only way they'll be able to see the kingdom, mm -hmm. understand the kingdom, is to see your family. Amen. And because your family is an expression, a prophetic mm -hmm. expression of the kingdom. And now mm -hmm. you have in it, <clears throat> excuse me, you have in it individuals in the family and you have some relationships. So both of those are important. The individual members of the family and the relationships uh, of the various members. And, and however you define your family uh, may be different than how somebody else defines it. Uh, you know, Sherry and I, for example, have an adopted son, mm. and he has three children and a wife, so I couldn't just uh, measure my family by blood relatives, blood. because uh, you'd say, well, he's not my blood relative, but he's as much my son as uh, uh, my other children yes, are yes. my children, and, and so how, how do you define it? Well, that's what we're talking about tonight. How, what is the best thing that we can do for our family? It, like I say, it's a, an issue that I have pondered for, for years, and not that I know uh, the ins and outs of everything, but there are some things that I see, and that is we need to mm -hmm. serve the Lord. So if you want to have the greatest impact on your family, then serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because it's an expression of the kingdom. And when we seek the kingdom of God, he adds all of these things to us. And uh, the question is, well, does God want us to be in his kingdom? Well, what is the kingdom? It's righteousness, peace, peace and, and joy. joy. That's Romans 14, In 17. the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Spirit. And so, yes, God wants righteousness in your family. He wants mm -hmm. peace mm -hmm. in, your, in family. your family. He wants joy in your family. And all of those come uh, by the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is something God wants. He wants uh, your <clears throat> He wants your kingdom. Uh, to, he wants His kingdom to come. See, that was the prayer. He said, "Pray this prayer. Your kingdom come." Um, uh, so He wants uh, the kingdom to come in your family, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God to come in mm -hmm, your family. Mm -hmm. that, that's real important, and, and we all need. Uh, the kingdom to come in our family, because then we will have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Uh, I, I am concerned about my children, my grandchildren. I'm mm -hmm. concerned about you and your children and your grandchildren and mm -hmm. uh, even future generations that have not been born yet. Amen. And so we need to, we need to think in those terms. 
You know, Proverbs uh, 29, 18 says, without a vision, my people perish. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have a vision of what does your family look like. Uh, have a vision of it looking like God's kingdom. That That's very important because it is a prophetic expression uh, of God's kingdom, and it's a powerful. If you uh, work together in your family and, and bring forth righteousness, peace, and joy that in the Holy Spirit, there's going to be great benefits from that. There's going to be a shield of protection around your family, uh, around your finances, around your bodies. Uh, yeah, there's going to be healing in your family. <clears throat> there, there's going to be great benefits from uh, visualizing your family as uh, a component of the kingdom of God. Now, see, if your family uh, represents the kingdom of God and my family represents the kingdom of God and all of our families are these building blocks of the overall kingdom of God. The overall kingdom of God is going to be built on these building blocks of families where mm -hmm. the families operate uh, as a component of the kingdom mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really important. Well, that's good. And I want to think about something that um, Acts um, chapter 16 uh, and it's a verse that uh, um, the Paul said to the jailer or the prisoner, uh, the, the prison warden. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's see what he said. Okay, again, I'm reading from the New American Standard. They said, believe in the Lord and you will be saved, you and your household. There it is. It's pretty simple. That's what we want. That's the end result. That's right. We want our family to be saved. Uh, it would just be a tragedy upon tragedy for us to get into heaven and, and, and we look around and we're missing a family. Yeah, we're member. missing a family member. But God gave a promise there, and I believe it's one of the greatest promises in the Bible. Yes. You, if you believe, believe. you and your whole household, household will be, be saved. saved. You need to be uh, getting hold of that promise. And, and let's say that you don't have any children yet, or, or let's say you're even single. Well, this is all, uh, this is not the end of the result, the end of things. Uh, you, you still, there's a family to come. And uh, what the family may look like, I don't know. But, but you can have your family come forth and the whole family be saved. Mm -hmm. And again, to me, that's one of the greatest promises in the Amen. Bible. I, I would hate to myself serve the Lord all the days of my life and then not find some of my children in heaven. I want all of my children in heaven. I want all of my grandchildren in heaven. And yeah, our, our not, siblings and not just those, but even yours. I want to see your family mm. standing together in eternity. Uh, that's real important. Who are we connecting with? Uh, you know, it says these grace joints. It's the grace joints that we're going to grow. Uh, God has one plan of growth and it's for us to connect. And part of the connection there mm -hmm. is the family, the family that we have. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be just a, a father and a mother and two children. Uh, it, your family may look a lot different than that. It doesn't matter. But when God joins you with people, then that becomes your portion. Mm -hmm. And we need to believe uh, that our portion will be in heaven with Amen. us, Amen. whoever God connects with us and says, this is the, your portion. Like I said, I have a son who is not a blood relative, but he is mm. a, a part of my portion and I want him in heaven and I want Hallelujah. him and his children and wife in heaven. Amen. But it's not just about that because it's the kingdom and the kingdom is here. I want Hallelujah. my children here in the kingdom uh, on the earth and serving the Lord. That, that's what it's all about. Just like uh, Joshua said, as for me and my, my household, household, we're going to serve the Lord. Now you can serve all kinds of gods and idols if you want to, but it's, there's no profit uh, to that. You have to serve the living God because 
if you seek him, uh, you, when you come to him, seek him diligently, he will reward you. Part of your reward is who are you carrying? Who are you carrying to heaven? See, I'm talking about what's the best thing that we can do for our family. I believe the very best thing that we can do is to have our whole family saved. And they'd be serving the Lord, even in this life, in this kingdom. And if our family, if my family uh, is serving the Lord as a king, a unit of the kingdom of God, and your family is serving God as a unit of the kingdom of God, then we can build. Mm, we can build, build all those family together. units. We can build together. And that's going to uh, sum up to mm -hmm. the overall kingdom which is going to be made up of families and it'll be also made up of some individuals <clears throat> um, that maybe they don't they haven't been placed in a family unit but but I believe with the people here and the um, that you're going to have families and it, even if you don't have them yet you're going to have them and so we need to be believing uh, today because mm. without a vision see we're going to perish you need to have a vision for the way your family function, the, the way your family operates, see it in the perspective of God's kingdom. Now, I know that a lot of people just want to take a look at some verses here and there and say, well, this is the husband, this is the wife, and this. But, mm. but I see it in a bigger, more integrated Right, bigger approach. picture. It's the kingdom, and your family is a part of the kingdom, and, and, and that Family unit is a part of the kingdom. And then we're all going to come together as families in the kingdom and function in that way uh, in the kingdom of God. And so it's about the individual members of your family and it's about the relationships. You know, it'd be terrible if a couple of siblings uh, couldn't uh, communicate with each other, if they were mad at each other, hold, held grudges. Mm -hmm. and that's the way my father was, my father yeah, and his yeah. brother held grudges for at least 25 years mm. and, and until they die. That's uh, terrible. And, and that's a terrible situation. We've got to have our family functioning as uh, a unit of the kingdom of God because it's powerful. Mm -hmm. See, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, but also uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 20 says the kingdom of God is not, oh, listen to this. Mm. It's not about words, but it's about power Hallelujah. because it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So there's a lot of people out there that are trying to live and exist in this life without any power. And, and that power has to come uh, from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and so I want to just talk about some advantages of uh, having a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. But before you move on okay. to that point, I just have this little chorus in my in my spirit and how important it is for us to bring our families together and to make sure that all of them know the Lord and are born again. And this little chorus just goes like this. As I look around me at these days, we're living in I question how much longer will it be now listen to this till the father reaches over touches Jesus on the shoulder says son bring my family home to me Hallelujah. and so that's how important it is uh, to the father the heavenly father that we have our family all together in that unit serving the lord and functioning as the kingdom of god amen and then when we sum our, sum all of our families up then that becomes the overall kingdom of god and that's what we're doing now i want to talk about the holy spirit here because we see he's very important uh and there are, let's say, five advantages I'd like to talk about. Uh, Jesus said, it's to your advantage, John 16, 7, it's mm. to your advantage I go away, for if I don't go away, then the Holy Spirit cannot come. So the Holy Spirit is your advantage on this earth, that 
families that are not serving God. Oh, glory to God. Here it is. There, they don't have this advantage. They don't you, have it. you have this advantage. What's the best thing that you can do? Well, it's to take advantage of the advantage that you have in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To appropriate the advantages of the Holy Spirit. And, the, and there are about five I'd like to talk about. First, it's Christ uh, in you. Number one is Christ in you. You know, uh, Galatians 2.20, Paul said, uh, I'm crucified. Nevertheless, I live, yet it's not me who lives, but it's Christ in me. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. It's Christ in me. That's pretty exciting. Yes. So the first advantage uh, of the Holy Spirit is we know who we are. We have Christ living in me. Colossians 1.27 says Christ is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the, the hope, hope of, of glory. glory. So you, you've got to know the Christ living in you, and, and you, you know this by the Holy Spirit. Now, number two, uh, it, it's really important for us to be able to uh, have the power and I'm going to talk about two uh, advantages that relate to the power. And the first one is grace. You know, 1 Corinthians 15 says, I am what I am. I am Paul was writing here. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I mean. And uh, it hasn't been in vain, in vain that he's inside of me. He's, he's laboring. And, and he, even though it appears that I'm laboring more than other people, it's really uh, his grace, the grace of the Holy Spirit in me that is doing the laboring. And so Paul was accomplishing a lot of things. He knew it, but it was not by his strength. And so he's giving, mm -hmm. um, he's giving recognition to the Holy Spirit. So this is an advantage. The first advantage I talked about of having the Christ within you is that, I mean, the first advantage of the Holy Spirit is that you know you have the Christ within you and that Christ can come forth uh, and operate. Number two is the grace of God. And that's the power of God. That's the operational power of God. Mm -hmm. Paul said, uh, I am what I am yeah, by the grace. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. So mm -hmm. we've not been given uh, a spirit, spirit of, of bondage, but a spirit of adoption. And we do mm -hmm. this by the Holy Spirit. So first, we've got this power then. Here's the power of the Holy Spirit in grace. Number three is the anointing. Uh, Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed, okay, so this is about to explain what the anointing is, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy, Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, okay, so here's the second source of power, and that's the anointing, and it's the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. Mm. So this is the anointing power. And it comes through the Spirit. And it allows you to go about doing good. Hallelujah. And you overcome evil with good. good. That's Romans 12, 21. So you've got to have that anointing so that you can do good. Now that's pretty exciting. Okay, so I've gotten down to three mm -hmm. of my advantages of the Holy Spirit. The fourth one is the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And really, we're talking about uh, Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. Uh, for the fruit mm -hmm. of the Spirit so is love, love and joy, joy peace, peace long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faithfulness and meekness and temperance. And that temperance is not your uh, flesh controlling things, but that's the inward mm -hmm. power of the Spirit. Uh, keeping you from going out and doing things that you shouldn't do. So there's the fruit. Now, how? why is the fruit so important? And where do you practice uh, bringing forth the fruit? It's in your family. Yes, amen. I, I had uh, three children. Yes. And uh, they would do a lot of things to rub me the wrong way. Those three children, I tell them, don't do this, and they'd do it, and I'd tell them to do this, and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, that's a time where you develop the fruit of the spirit. Uh, and we had three teenagers at one time. And so you can't uh, go out there and say, well, uh, when I'm fully in the ministry and uh, in 20 years, then I'll have all of the 
all of the fruit I need. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> it's little by little. See, uh, you, you got these, uh, it's like stones in the, in the uh, uh, river and those stones are knocking off the edges. And that's what your mm -hmm. children do. They knock off those edges on you so that uh, you're not uh, uh, so likely to go off in an explosion when somebody uh, crosses you or does something they're not supposed to do because you've practiced the fruit. You brought forth the fruit of the spirit mm. in your family mm. first. Hallelujah. That's where it starts. It starts mm. in the family. Starts in the Be family. Because the fruit is all about the relationships. And where are the most important relationships that you have? They're in your family. In your family. With your spouse and with mm -hmm. your children and with your siblings and your on extended and on, family and Amen. on and on Amen. and spiritual family or just focusing right. primarily on uh, natural family but out of the natural family uh, grows the supernatural and, and spiritual family and and that expands uh, sherry and i for example have multitudes of oh, spiritual children yes that, yes uh, yes they, they look to us for oversight and I had to overcome some difficulties with my own children uh, in order to overcome the, uh, mm -hmm. the problems that the, my spiritual children have because they, they have those same kinds of uh, spots on their stones. And so as we're tumbling along in the river, uh, we're knocking those little jagged edges off of our stone so that we become a smooth stone. Hallelujah. And a smooth stone. See, David used a smooth stone uh, to bring down Goliath. Amen. And, and so that's that's where that fruit of the spirit is. You, you've got to stay in the Holy Ghost yes, brook amen. long enough, enough so that all those uh, rugged Rough edges, edges uh, are knocked off of you. And, and that'll your family will do it. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're uh and if your natural children don't do it, or your spouse doesn't do it, well, then uh, you get out there and start raising up some spiritual children. And there's still, if there's any of those rugged edges on your stone, mm -hmm. they will bring them to the surface and they'll knock them off. Uh, and so we need each other. <laughs> we need each other. And, and see, my prayer uh, for you is to bring forth spiritual children, not just your own natural children but bring forth spiritual children. Uh, mm -hmm. Give them the word of God by the spirit of God mm -hmm. and, and set them on the right path. That's what, that's what parents do. They set our children on the right path. Now, a father will set, for example, a father will set a child on a path, but the child may not stay on the path. And after a while, they veer off. But if they've got a father or a mother there, uh, praying for them and giving them mm -hmm. guidance, they're going to come back just like the prodigal son. Yes, you know, I he did. went off a long ways and, yeah. and he had uh, great wealth and yet he wasted it, squandered it all. Uh, but yet uh, his father knew he was going to return. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what parents are about. And that's both natural parents and spiritual parents that uh, they set people on the path Mm -hmm. And yet when they fall off the path, uh, then they pick them up and put it back on it. Well, this is the path. Let's mm -hmm. show them the path. This is the path. This is the way you go. <laughs> uh, so it's an ongoing <laughs> process. Stay, stay on the path. Stay on the path. And there are some that uh, some of our spiritual children are, uh, they're still on the milk. Uh, and then some, some are uh, ready to, to eat the meat. And they've had their senses exercised and they're ready to go on the meat. And so and some are out there running. And some are out there running. And some have gone what, astray. And some are doing uh, what God has called them to do. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So the point tonight is that family is very important and that we are an expression. Your family is an expression of God's kingdom. Well, I've talked about four uh, advantages of the Holy Spirit. And you might guess that when I go to five, it's going to be signs and wonders. <laughs> signs and wonders and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Number four, of course, was the fruit of the Spirit. Now we're moving into the gifts of the Spirit. Now in your family, you need the gifts to operate. 
uh, you do not want to be blindsided by something mm -hmm. that uh, the enemy does or your child does. <clears throat> so you need discerning of spirits uh, to operate. Mm, absolutely. And so you need the gifts and you need the power of gifts. Mm. And uh, it may be that uh, you have a child die. Uh, Sherry, we had our youngest son drowned one day and she uh, mm -hmm. picked him up and uh, brought life back into his body. He said, you've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Mm. You, you can't say, oh, let me go home and, and practice for uh, practice these gifts. No, you've got to be ready and functioning in the gifts. So the gifts are very important. That's an advantage of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 12, 11 says all of these gifts work by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So whether it's the inspirational gifts, uh, the wisdom gifts, or the gifts of power, uh, they all work by the Holy Spirit. So you need that. And, and to raise a family, you need the gifts in operation. I give you this example. Uh, one time, our youngest son had uh, graduated from high school and moved out um, hundreds of miles away. And then one night, uh, Sherry uh, sees that he's in the wrong place. So she calls um, a, a, a woman uh, out hundreds of miles from here and asks to speak to her son. Now, the Holy Spirit told her where her son was. And she got him on the phone and said, what are you doing there? You go back home. You don't need to be there. See, that was a gift. That was a <laughs> gift in operating there. I mean, you, you need the gifts. Uh, I mean, our children have been into a lot of things they shouldn't be into. That's right. And uh, the Holy Spirit has shown us things. And uh, it's important for us to be able to function uh, in the gifts. And, and, and you might say, well, I'll just wait until I go to a a church congregation a service sometime and let somebody else prophesy. No, you need to be prophesying over your children. You need to be prophesying over your over your spouse. You need to be prophesying over children that have not even been born. Yet. Amen. And Amen. This is the time to do it. It's not uh, to wait until they get in prison and then begin prophesying. Today is the day. <laughs> this is the oh, day of the yeah, Lord. Yeah, you you need to be prophesying. Uh, everybody needs to be prophesying glory to god i told you the kingdom so your family is a prophetic uh expression mm. of god's kingdom mm. and, and, and yeah. you, you have a big responsibility in your family you need to be functioning certainly in the in all of the fruit you, you can't have a uh, some of the fruit that you're not operating with, you need all of them and you need the gifts. Amen. And, and you, you might say, well, I, I don't, I, I don't operate in the gifts. Well, you know, it says you can go and prophesy. Everybody needs to start prophesying, mm -hmm. uh, start prophesying Speaking the word. over your family. If you've got a child that's gone astray, you need to prophesy and bring that child back in. See the prophetic voice, the gifts are very important to raise up a family and to bring them into their purpose and destiny Amen. and call them out of evil. Uh, uh, children, just uh, they, they can go and get in the biggest mess at, at times, but, but you don't stop loving them. Jesus said, love like I have loved you. How did yes, he love us? Yes. He gave his life for Unconditionally. us. Unconditionally. Unconditionally. He gave his life for us. And we've got to love our children. We've got to love our spouse. And sometimes they're not very lovely. They, they get in a mess. Uh, you, you know, if they're just little bitty toddlers, they may run out there and get in the mud. Uh, but uh, who has to pick them up? Well, the parents have to pick them up and clean them Mom, up. I mean, well, what I mean. if they get to be 18 or 20? It's still the parents. Uh, pick them up and clean them off and hit, put, set them on the right path again. You, you showed them the path and, and yet they're going to go off uh, uh, some other way at times. And so we've got to keep prophesying. We've got to keep interceding for our family. We've got to uh, be doing the kingdom work in our family. Amen. Because Amen. our family, see, mm -hmm. is the most important thing that we have. All right. Well, Sherry. and that, there, there have been three times that I've gone into <clears throat> crack houses and gotten Jason William and said, you're coming with me. 
and taking him by the hand and, you know, him being much taller than me, much bigger than me. And the last house uh, was uh, just filled with, with needles and, and bottles and, and I, I walked through the door, the door was um, unlocked and I walked through the door and I said, where is my son? And they said, he's upstairs. And then, you know, I went upstairs, you know, I woke him up. I said, get your things, you're coming with me. And, and, and so there are times when we have to be um, ready uh, to do what the Lord is telling us to do. And we, we're not going to shrink back. We're not going to say, no, that, you know, I'll let somebody else go get my son. No, uh, you know, three times, you know, three houses uh, I brought him out of. And because the Lord gave me the strength to do that. And, and so we have to, we have to do that as parents, as a family, uh, is to help our family serve the Lord and, and be the kingdom expression. That's what Fred yes. is talking about. Yes. That is so important. That's the most important thing you can do. You, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people want to think, well, my ministry is more important than my family, but it's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. You know, the priority, a uh, list of priorities is God first. Yes. Uh, spouse second. Yes. Children third. Third. And on down the line, line is ministry. A lot of other things, way down the line. But I tell you, your family is important, and don't don't neglect your family. Uh, it's a life and death uh, situation. You do not want uh, the devil to get a hold of your children. Amen. Amen. Kill them before their day, before mm -hmm. they have fulfilled their purpose and uh, on this earth. What is the most important thing that you can do? For your family, I believe it's to serve the Lord. Amen. Just like Joshua said, I, I don't care what you're going to do, but as far as me and my household, so we're going to serve, serve the, Lord. the Lord. Amen. And I believe when you do that, you'll see the rewards. You'll see uh, children coming back to the Lord. Okay. You'll see uh, spouses being turned to the Lord. You, you'll see tremendous uh, impacts from your serving the Lord. Uh, don't think that he's not a rewarder of those who search for him who Amen. diligently Amen. seek him because he is uh, the bottom line here is your family is important and the best thing you can do is to have them operate in god's kingdom and the only way you can do that is by you serving god because you've got a responsibility you cannot turn your children responsibility for your children over to institutions or Absolutely. over to car uh to prisons and jails and think well they they'll get them straight now you forget it forget it it's your responsibility put your child on the right path and if he falls off or she falls off we'll pick him up pick her up clean her up and put her on the path again because hallelujah the best thing you can do for a the, your family is to serve God and Amen. To pray Amen. for them and to bring them into the kingdom and let your family be a prophetic expression of God's kingdom.